it's big story time and it is the return of the riots. By far my least favorite of returns, with the top of my list being Jedi, King, and Mac, but nevertheless, we are back to talking about massive groups of people vandalizing our city and essentially how to make it stop. Sally emailed us and asked, Hey Dan, can you shed some light on why Ted Wheeler, the mayor, isn't doing anything to stop the continual destruction and violence in Portland? Well, firstly, I don't necessarily agree with that premise to say that Mayor Wheeler, who is also the police commissioner, hasn't done anything to stop the destruction and violence. The most recent example of his action would be over the weekend. The mayor endorsed that controversial kettling tactic that police used on Friday night. And while kettling sounds like the way Gen Z would try to rebrand having tea, it's actually a method used by police to catalog people at a riot. See, on Friday, when a group started marching and breaking windows downtown, instead of dispersing the crowd, they trapped them. Nobody could leave. The only way out was to be questioned by police. They took pictures of everyone without their masks on, and they got their names. Now, if you're wondering, wow, is that, is that even legal? Can they do that? The answer is yes. We covered that last night. You can find that episode right now on YouTube. So there you have it. The mayor is doing stuff. You don't seem satisfied. I don't blame you. If you watched the news conference that the city called yesterday to talk about all of this, we actually didn't hear any specific tactical plans. Instead, we kind of got the opposite. What I mean is we learned that the mayor's last plan that had some specifics announced a few months ago has gone nowhere. Here's a question from OPB reporter Jonathan Levinson. You said that you were going to convene a meeting with federal, state, and local law enforcement to, uh, you said, develop clear plans to address anarchist violence. You also said you wanted to institute a type of restorative justice where people convicted of vandalizing property would have to meet with the owners of that property and perform community service to repair damages. Um, did either of those two things happen? And do you have an update on how that's going? Uh, neither of those things have happened at this point because there, frankly, isn't interest in the part of the legislature to bring those issues forward. Those would have to happen at the statutory level. I still remain interested in both. Look, we arrested somebody the other night for a fairly egregious act of criminal destruction, and it's my understanding he'd been arrested at least two times previously in like the prior six to eight weeks. And so my viewpoint is if you are a repeat offender and you get arrested, uh, the second time you get arrested in close proximity and the third time you get arrested in close proximity to the second, it seems to me that the charge should increase. I obviously don't control all aspects of the criminal justice system. I am the police commissioner, so I control that piece of it. But I have to work with my colleagues who uh, have responsibility over other parts of the criminal justice system in order to get their agreement. Interesting. I, I, I found it interesting. Um, I think a lot of people can agree with what the mayor's saying. He's saying he wants to make things happen. He's got plans, but he can't. And it's, it's Salem's fault. Salem's fault. I don't really remember hearing that uh, before. Not, not in that way. And I wanted some context. So I talked to one of my people in Salem, a political expert who we've had on the show several times before, Rebecca Tweed. You know, when I saw the mayor's press conference, I saw his his comments and I thought it was interesting that, you know, kicking the can all the way down to Salem to say we're waiting for the legislature to act isn't really what I would expect from the mayor who's come out repeatedly saying he's concerned about these issues. But we're not quite seeing action. We're still seeing riots every day. We're still seeing protests every day that have led to violence. I think there's more work that needs to be done. He made he made it seem, as you said, that it, 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 it was as if the lawmakers in Salem had to be the ones to kind of push that change forward. It, and it, is that accurate or is it supposed to be kind of more heavily burdened by the mayor and other kind of local jurisdictions in this Portland area? It really should depend on uh, the it's really the responsibility of the district attorney. Right. When we look at things like restorative justice, when we look at things like community service, those are decisions that are made after an arrest has happened, after all of the, you know, the evidence has come in on whether a crime has been committed. Those things have to happen at a local level. There are tweaks that can be made at a statutory level um, as far as, you know, minimum sentencing or when tear gas can be used. That's one of the biggest adjustments that have been made. But those need to be conversations between the district attorneys, 
um, association and the legislature, but they're really going to come from the local level first. Okay, so it's kind of it's kind of what I thought there. I mean, Salem is a part of it, but it's more about the mayor and the police and the DA and perhaps most importantly, you. See, yesterday's news conference wasn't just about kettling or other tactics that police plan to use. It was also PR, in my opinion. See, they need you, the public, to embrace alternative policing tactics or maybe even more aggressive ones, something that the community certainly didn't embrace over the summer. Yesterday, we heard from black community leaders like Blazers legend Terry Porter and others. Porter and pretty much everybody else that spoke, they pleaded to rioters to stop rioting. Um, I'm speaking out today as someone who loves Portlanders and someone who is deeply concerned about the future of our city. Okay, look, I fully recognize the power of Porter's voice in this community, definitely, though I am doubting that many of the anarchists marching to abolish capitalism are listening. If they were, they probably would have been listening the first time around when black business owners reacted to their businesses being vandalized by a group of mostly white people lashing out to supposedly support black lives. But again, I don't think Porter was talking to the rioters. I think he was talking to everyone else. Now, I haven't seen any recent data about how the community is feeling currently about controversial police tactics, things like kettling, but I know what I see in my inbox. And last night, I got a lot of emails like these. Greg said, I am a progressive Democrat, but I've had it with these rioters. Kettling makes perfect sense to me. Steve says, I have a bias that most police officers abuse their power, but I'm very impressed with the kettling technique you described. And Kate emailed and said, sounds like a good idea to me. I'm a progressive who has spent a lot of time in the streets for peaceful protests. I support freedom of speech, but not property damage. This must end. So this is, of course, a very complicated topic. It's something we're gonna be touching on all week and probably moving forward even after that. I'm obviously making some assumptions here, okay? Interpreting what I am seeing from our leaders. Let me know what you think, all right? Is there something I'm, I'm not considering, an angle you think I should be considering? Email me at the story at kgw.com or find me on Facebook or use Twitter in the hashtag, hey Dan.